नमस्ते लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द प्रेयर ओम सनावतु सनो गुणक्तु सह वीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विना वदितमस्तु मा विद्विषा वहै ओम शांति 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 ही ओम मे ही प्रोटेक्ट अस बोथ टीचर एंड स्टूडेंट टुगेदर मे ही नरिश अस बोथ टुगेदर मे वी वर्क कंजॉइंटली विद ग्रेट एनर्जी मे आवर स्टडीज बी विगरस एंड इफेक्टिव मे वी नॉट हैव म्यूचुअली डिस्प्यूट ओम लेट देयर बी पीस इन मी let there be peace in my environment and let there be peace in the forces that act on me dear students today we will be discussing about tuberculosis of the hip on following points one incidence and prevalence two pathology of the tb hip three the collapses in the tb hip then clinical features deformities of the hip due to tuberculosis how to reveal various deformities thomas test and squaring of the pelvis the four stages of tuberculosis of hip investigations sanmukh sundaram's radiological seven types of tb hip picture then investigation and finally management including the conservative versus surgical treatment so tuberculosis of the hip joint is ranked next to the spinal tuberculosis and the ratio being 10 is to 7 it means whenever there are 10 cases of spinal tuberculosis seven cases will be there for tb hip and it constitutes 15% of all osteoarticular tuberculosis it is always secondary the initial focus of infection could be either in the acetabular roof as you can see in this particular diagram it is represented by a then it could be at epiphysis as shown by c it could be in the metaphyseal region as shown by d it could be in the greater trochanter it could be synovial membrane rare limb and it could be in the trochanter bursa now the tuberculosis elsewhere like lungs tonsils git etc spreads through the hematogenous root and the tuberculous infection develops in any one of those six sites we just mentioned the synovial membrane is one of the most commonly affected and here the tubercle formation causes the synovial hypertrophy resulting in the venous formation now this venous destroys the articular cartilage resulting in the development of fibrous ankylosis of the hip bony ankylosis rarely develops now the microscopy shows the tubercle formation giant cell and lymphocytes upper end of the femur is intraarticular intracapsular and hence whenever the upper end of the femur is involved the joint gets rapidly involved on the contrary the joint involvement in the acetabular lesion is very rare now all these smaller tubercle they coalesce undergo caseation and form the cold abscess this cold abscess tracks down along the areas of least resistance as you can see in this particular diagram and may point in any one of those sites namely the femoral triangle inguinal region medial side of the thigh greater trochanter gluteal region ischiorectal fossa 
lateral and posterior aspect of the thigh and finally anywhere in the pelvis. Coming to the clinical features, tuberculosis of the hip is common in the first three decades of the life. The patient usually presents with painful limb and that is the most commonest, the earliest symptom in TB hip, the painful limb. Now he or she will have an antalgic gait with a short stance face. Pain is maximum towards the end of the day and there is often a history of night cries. There is a marked wasting of the thigh and gluteal muscles. There may be presence of scars and sinuses. About 8% of the patient may develop cold abscess in the region as shown in the figure in the last slide what we have seen and 10% may show pathological subluxation. No tenderness can be elicited by the direct pressure on the femoral triangle or by bitrochantic compression. The attitude of the limb differs depending upon the stage of the disease which we will be discussing in coming slides. Now, the following deformities may develop in the tuberculosis of the hip and these deformities include flexion deformity, adduction deformity, abduction deformity and finally there may be a limb length discrepancy. Now the flexion deformity in the initial stage of the diseases, the patient keeps the hip in flexion as this is the position of easy and of maximum joint capacity. Soft tissue contractures convert this into a fixed flexion deformity. Then we call it as in a short form we uh, label it as FFD, fixed flexion deformity. And now this FFD making locomotion impossible. In an effort to bring the limb on the ground and to make the locomotion possible, the lumbar spine goes into an exaggerated lardosis and thus it conceals the fixed flexion deformity. The patient can lie down straight on a bed in the face of this fixed flexion deformity because of the exaggerated lardosis. Now, as you see in this particular diagram, now Thomas test is done to reveal the fixed flexion deformity. Now this lardosis can be confirmed by easy passage of examiner's hand between the bed and the back of the patient. Normally, this is not possible. Now, in order to reveal this fixed flexion deformity, thomas test is carried out. And here, the unaffected hip of the patient is flexed over the abdomen only un until the lumbar lardotic curve disappears. I will repeat. The unaffected hip of the patient is flexed over the abdomen only until the lumbar lardotic curve disappears, not more than that. And as you flex it, the affected hip then assumes a position of flexion and the degree of fixed flexion deformity is calculated by the angle formed between the thigh and the bed. Similarly, there is an adduction deformity. Now, Soft tissue contractures converts the adduction position adopted by the patient due to spasm of the adductor muscles following damage to the articular cartilage to one of the fixed adduction deformities. Now you can see in this particular diagram how the adduction deformity uh, develops in tuberculosis of the hip. The limb is now brought to the ground as you can see by the in the third picture. The limb is now brought to the ground by the elevation of pelvis as is evidenced by the anterior superior spine lying at a higher level on the affected side. And there is a scoliosis of the spine away from the deformity. 
Remember, in adduction deformity, there is an elevation of the iliac anterior superior iliac spine on the affected side and there is a scoliosis away from the deformity. Now, the adduction deformity can be revealed by squaring the pelvis. This is done by adducting the affected limb until both the anterior superior iliac spine they come to lie in a same straight horizontal line as you can see in this particular diagram. So, the angle formed between the vertical and the adducted limb is the angle of fixed adduction deformity. Similarly, there could be an abduction deformity. Now, in the initial phase of the disease, because of the increase in the joint space due to effusion, the limb assumes the position of flexion, abduction and external rotation. I will repeat, in the initial phase of the disease, because of the increase in the joint space due to effusion, the limb assumes a position of flexion, abduction and external rotation. Now, if fixed in this particular position by the soft tissue contractures, the patient develops a fixed abduction deformity. Now, how to reveal that abduction deformity? The limb is then brought to the ground by the downward tilt of the pelvis as evidenced by anterior superior spine lying at a lower level with the corresponding scoliosis of the spine towards the affected side. Now, here remember, the anterior superior spine lies at a lower level and there is a scoliosis towards the affected side. That is how the patient tries to conceal the deformity. Now, the fixed abduction deformity can be revealed by abducting the limb, affected limb, until again both the anterior superior spine, they lie at the same level. And now the angle formed between the vertical and the abducted limb is the angle of fixed abduction deformity. Coming to the limb length discrepancy, in the initial stages, there may be apparent lengthening, but in the advanced stages, the patient develops shortening. Now, there are four stages of tuberculosis described. They are stage 1, stage of synovitis, stage 2, stage of early arthritis, stage 3, stage of advanced arthritis and stage 4, stage of advanced arthritis with either subluxation or dislocation. Now, let us see what happens in stage of synovitis. So, stage 1 synovitis, here the disease is synovial and with it, the patient assumes flexed, abducted and external rotated position of the limb. There is an apparent lengthening now. There is no real shortening and the extremes of the movement, they are decreased and painful. Now here, remember, the apparent length is more than the true length. The stage 2, stage of early arthritis. Now, in these stages, the local signs are exaggerated. The spasm of the adductors and flexors, they result into flexion, adduction and internal rotation of the affected limb. Now, there is apparent shortening and the, there is significant muscle wasting and the hip movements are decreased in all directions. Now, whenever the movements of any joint are decreased in all directions, it is suggestive of arthritis. Now, the true shortening may be less than 1 cm. Now, here the apparent length is less than the true length. Coming to the stage 3, advanced arthritis. The advanced arthritis, the flexion, adduction and internal rotation deformity found in stage 2 are exaggerated now. There is a true shortening with a considerable restriction of hip movements and muscle wasting. There is a gross destruction of the articular cartilage of the head of the femur and acetabulum and now the apparent length is less 
than the true length. In the stage 4 of advanced arthritis and subluxation or dislocation, the migration of acetabulum, frank pathological posterior dislocation, modern pastel hip or proterizio acetabuli, these are the features in this stage. Now, Trendelenburg test is positive in all the above stages. Coming to the investigation part, the investigations, various investigation we advise includes the laboratory test, radiography and then other investigation. The laboratory test, these tests show anemia, lymphocytosis, increased ESR, ETC, that is all suggestive of the chronic infection. The radiograph of the hip joint, in the early stages, the radiograph shows rarefraction of the bones and in advanced stages, there may be reduction in the joint space. Depending upon the radiological features, Shanmukh Sundaram has described seven types of tuberculosis hip in advanced stages of arthritis particularly. Now, this includes normal looking, type 1 is normal looking, then type 2 is traveling and wandering acetabulum and type 3 is dislocated type, type 4 is perthes type, type 5 is protrusio acetabuli and type 6 is atrophic type, type 7 is mortar and pastel type. Type 1 normal looking, here the hip looks almost normal but for some rarefaction. In type 2, the traveling or wandering acetabulum, here because of destruction of the joint due to arthritis and due to muscle spasm, the head of the femur comes to lie in the region of ilium. Type 3, dislocated hip. In this condition, there is a pathological dislocation of the hip joint. You can see in this particular diagram. Type 4, Perthes type. Here, the head of the femur is becomes dense and there could be collapse. Type 5, Protrusio acetabuli type. Now here, there is a gross destruction, gross reduction of the joint space and the head of the femur threatens to protrude through the acetabulum into the pelvic cavity. In the atrophic type, the sixth type, here there is a gross reduction in the joint space as well as the size of the head of the femur. It appears that it is very atrophic. And finally, the seventh type, the mortar and pestle type, where in this condition, the head of the femur becomes very small. And that is why we call it as pestle. And the acetabular cavity becomes wide. We call it as mortar. I hope all of you remember the pestle and mortar we used to be taught during our pharmacology lectures. Now, this particular classification helps to assess the severity of the affection of the hip due to the disease. MRI of the pelvis with both hip joint has become the gold standard for diagnosing the tuberculosis of hip. Now, other investigations include the synovial fluid analysis in which estimation of the protein, lymphocytes, sugar, it is done. Then the synovial biopsy, then CBNAT, the latest uh, test being advised, introduced. The Mantux test, arthrography, TC, may all help in the diagnosis of TB hip. Coming to the treatment part. Now, the treatment part is divided into early stages and late stages. In early stages, which includes the synovitis and stage 2 early arthritis, the patient is put on chemotherapy and the traction. The traction reduces muscle spasm. It prevents or corrects the deformity and maintains the joint space. If favorable clinical response is obtained, then hip is gradually mobilized. But if the disease is not responding favorably, then synovectomy or arthrotomy are carried out in the stage of synovitis synovectomy and a thorough joint debridement is done in cases of early arthritis. 
coming to the management in late stages that is stage of advanced arthritis now in the stage of advanced arthritis the end result of this particular stage is fibrous ankylosis and the patient is put on chemotherapy and the traction once the gross ankylosis is accepted and if the limb is in a proper position proper position i mean 10 to 30 degrees of flexion at hip 5 to 10 degrees of external rotation and neutral between adduction and abduction so that would be the proper position of ankylosis i'll repeat 10 to 30 degrees of flexion at hip 5 to 10 degrees of external rotation at hip and neutral between adduction and abduction so that is what is a position which we expect hip to ankylose now once that is there the patient is immobilized in a plaster of paris spica for six to nine months and later the patient is made to bear weight now if the limb is not in a functional position then corrective astatomy and orthodesis in a proper position are carried out now in this particular diagram it is showing a procedure what we call it as britain's extra articular hip arthrodesis now various surgical treatment in the tuberculosis of the hip includes as i told you previously sinovectomy and arthrotomy now this is done in sinovitis stage when the disease is not responding favorably to conservative treatment partial sinovectomy and joint drainage and levers are also done Sinovectomy and joint debridement, this is preferred in early arthritis. The joint is exposed through the posterior approach. Thorough debridement of the joint is done by evacuation and the walls are carotid and washed. Then the osteotomy. This is done in an upper femoral corrective osteotomy and is indicated in the sound ankylosis in a bad position in flexion and adduction contractions now this particular osteotomy helps to correct the deformity and change the line of weight bearing displacement osteotomy can also be done in fibrous ankylosis with gross deformity and then final surgery is arthrodesis now this is indicated in adults with painful fibrous ankylosis maybe an active or a heel disease this procedure converts a painful hip into a painless stable hip this procedure could either be intraarticular or extraarticular or both now there is one important surgery described in the management of tuberculosis of hip and that is the girdle stone arthroplasty stiff hip is a gross disability and is particularly not acceptable by indian patients because they cannot use the indian toilet and here hence the girdle stone excision arthroplasty is preferred and it can be done either in an active stage or even in the healed stage after the growth stops now this gives a mobile painless hip joint apart from controlling the infection and correcting the deformity the only disadvantage is it leaves the hip unstable but still patients are happy with the girdle stone arthroplasty now total hip replacement is rarely done in the tuberculosis of hip actually as a standard teaching it is suggested that only after 10 years of the last evidence of active infection you can go for the tuberculosis of hip but with the advent of the surgery in arthroplasty people are now doing even within three to four years of tuberculosis of the hip amniotic arthroplasty has also been tried in tuberculosis of the hip nevertheless the results are far from satisfactory now here we end our uh, discussion on the tuberculosis of the hip but dear student one of the commonest problem we are facing in our routine clinical practice is obesity 
we all know that eat less and exercise more formula has proved to be the failed formula of late i have been working on the latest the most scientific evidence based concept of weight loss the happy king you may find few videos on this topic as well on my youtube channel the obesity among the medical student is at its peak nowadays due to obesity not only they are bullied but most of them also lose their self confidence resulting in deteriorating performance in academics for all of them this online video course will be most valuable if interested you may visit my facebook page i have given the link below https semicolon double slash www dot facebook dot com slash the happy key i host regular webinar for the same twice a week on wednesday and friday evening at 8 pm on sundays at 12 noon you may join using following link that zoom link is given please note it thank you for subscribing my channel thank you